In this video, we'll take a look at how we can install Postgres on a Mac machine. So let's search for Postgres in Google, and the first result should be the one that we're looking for. And within the Postgres website, just select the Downloads button, and this is going to show you the different platforms it supports. So we're going to install this for Mac. And then select Download the Installer. And then here we can see all of the versions that we can download. We're going to download whatever the latest version is. So in my case, it's 13.4. If you're watching this video in the future, it's probably going to be some other version, but it should all be relatively the same. So we'll just download under Mac. All right, and once it's finished downloading, just go ahead and select the DMG file that you downloaded, and then we'll set up the installer. And if you get this pop-up, just select Open, and then specify your password. With the installer window open, select Next. Uh, leave the default installation directory. Uh, now within here, uh, by default, it's going to install four different components. I'm gonna walk you through what each of these components does. The first one is the Postgres uh, server. So this is the actual Postgres database, so we definitely want to install that. Below that is PG Admin. This is a GUI that can be used to manage your Postgres databases. We're definitely going to install that because that's what we're gonna use in this course to actually manage our database. Stack Builder is an extra, um, almost like an extra installer that's used to uh, install extra extensions that give Postgres some extra functionality. We're not going to use any of those extensions, so go ahead and uncheck Stack Builder. And the last one is Command Line Tools, so we can manage Postgres through the GUI as well as the Command Line. Uh, in this course, we're going to stick exclusively to the GUI. However, I would still recommend downloading the Command Line Tools just in case you ever do want to use them. And then specify the default data directory, that's fine. Then you want to give uh, the password to your Postgres instance, so this is kind of like the root user equivalent. Here we specify what port we want our Postgres instance to run. This is the default Postgres port. Uh, if you want to change it, you can do it, uh, but just make sure that you know whenever we get to actually coding out our uh, API and specifying what port we connect to the Postgres database, make sure you update those accordingly. However, I recommend just keeping it as the default. And then everything else, just keep hitting next, and then it'll start the installation. All right, and once that's complete, just select finish. It's going to be, uh, at that point, Postgres has been successfully installed. Then what you want to do is just hit the little search icon, and I want you to search for PG Admin. All right, and so if you want to open up PG Admin, which we'll cover in the, either the next lecture or the lecture after that, just search for it, select it, and that's going to open up the GUI tool used to manage your database. 